If in a thunderstorm, the Earth is struck by lightning, the force creates concentric waves which slowly expand to circle the world until they come back to where they started. This proves to us that the Earth's crust is a conductor of electrical energy. Now, if we were to produce large quantities of electrical energy and if we directed it into the Earth's crust, then that energy would travel in concentric waves. There were rumors you went to Colorado Springs in order to contact Mars, is that true? It is possible for us to send out waves which can travel around the world. There are waves as well which can travel into space. How are you going to talk with them? I never intended to. However, I recorded certain electrical impulses of unknown origin, and these were repeated at constantly timed intervals. It's possible they were a kind of signal from space. And did you in turn send them a message? Ask the Martians that question. But you did send some sort of signal. A signal which might not be received for a million years. Therefore, Mr. Tesla, you do believe communication with distant worlds may someday be possible. Perhaps they've been sending us messages for ages, but we aren't aware of it. Mr. Tesla, what's that big pile of papers down there on the floor? My file on the work in Colorado Springs. Can you tell us what's in it? It's a new electrical system, completely different. As yet, it hasn't been finished. In just what way is it different? How will it affect us? Well, a great deal of it is merely guesswork, but it might have an important impact on the future. I hope it will lead to a decisive answer to the problem of energy. Good day, gentlemen. Mr. No more questions, please. In 1931, Tesla announced to reporters at a press conference that he was on the verge of discovering an entirely new source of energy. Asked to explain the nature of the power, he replied, The idea first came upon me as a tremendous shock. I can only say at this time that it will come from an entirely new and unsuspected source. Gentlemen, I can make no guarantees other than my discoveries. I am not an insurance company. You must take my word. You will have to rely on instinct, intuition and imagination. War clouds were again darkening Europe. On the 11th of July 1934, the headline on the front page of the New York Times read, Tesla, at 78. There's new, death beam. The article reported that the new invention will send concentrated beams of particles through the free air, of such tremendous energy that they will bring down a fleet of 10,000 enemy airplanes at a distance of 250 miles. Tesla stated that the death beam would make war impossible by offering every country an invisible Chinese wall. The idea generated considerable interest and controversy. Tesla went immediately to J.P. Morgan, Jr. in search of financing to build a prototype of his invention, Morgan was unconvinced. Tesla also attempted to deal directly with Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain of Great Britain, but when Chamberlain resigned upon discovering that he had been outmaneuvered by Hitler at Munich, Interest in Tesla's anti-war weapon eventually collapsed. By 1937 it was clear that war would soon break out in Europe. Frustrated in his attempts to generate interest and financing for his peace beam, he sent an elaborate technical paper, including diagrams, to a number of allied nations including the United States. Canada, England, France, the Soviet Union, and Yugoslavia, titled New Art of Projecting Concentrated Non-Dispersive Energy Through Natural Media. The paper provided the first technical description of what is today called a charged particle beam weapon. What set Tesla's proposal apart from the usual run of the fantasy, death rays, was a unique vacuum chamber with one end open to the atmosphere. Tesla devised a unique vacuum seal by directing a high-velocity air stream at the tip of his gun to maintain high vacua. The necessary pumping action would be accomplished with a large Tesla turbine. Of all the countries to receive Tesla's proposal, the greatest interest came from the Soviet Union. In 1937 Tesla presented a plan to the Amtorg Trading Corporation, an alleged Soviet arms front in New York City. Two years later, in 1939, one stage of the plan was tested in the USSR and Tesla received a check for $25,000. 
Tesla hoped that his invention would be used for purely defensive purposes, and thus would become an anti-war machine. His system required a series of power plants located along a country's coast that would scan the skies in search of enemy aircraft since the beam was projected in a straight line. It was only effective for about 200 miles, the distance of the curvature of the Earth. Tesla also contemplated peacetime applications for his particle beam, one being to transmit power without wires over long distances. Another radical notion he proposed was to heat up portions of the upper atmosphere to light the sky at night, a man-made aurora borealis. Whether Tesla's idea was ever taken seriously is still a martyr of conjecture. Most experts today consider his idea infeasible, though. His death beam bears an uncanny resemblance to the charged particle beam weapon developed by both the United States and the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Nonetheless, Tesla's dream for a technological means to end war seems as impossible now as it did when he proposed the idea in the 1930s. Tesla, death rays, a particle beams, particle beams are special sorts of electromagnetic waves, a special sort of light, the white light or daily light is a mixture of different length of waves. White light is a mixture of many colors which can be separated, red light has long waves whereas blue light has short waves, the waves making up a particle beam are quite different. Not only are all the waves the same length, but they are lined up so that the tops, peaks, of the waves coincide with each other. Particle beams can be concentrated into a tiny point. They have tremendous energy. Particle beams can produce enough heat to turn a metal into a vapor. They are accurate cutting tools that can even cut diamond, the hardest substance known to man. Particle beams are powerful enough to cut through metal in military operations. A particle beam can be bounced off a target such as an enemy airplane or ship to determine its distance and speed. Particle gyroscopes, guidance devices, are being developed to direct bombs and artillery shells to their target. Today, particle beams are used all also in medicine, for microsurgery, in delicate brain surgery and for coagulation of bleeding vessels into the eye structure of retina. They are also used to treat detached retina. The particle knife is completely sterile and seals small blood vessels as it cuts, minimizing tissue bleeding. One of the more controversial topics involving Nikola Tesla is what became of many of his technical and scientific papers after he died in 1943, just before his death at the height of World War II. He claimed that he had perfected his so-called death beam, so it was natural that the FBI and other U.S. government agencies would be interested in any scientific ideas involving weaponry. Some were concerned that Tesla's papers might fall into the hands of the Axis powers or the Soviets. The morning after the inventor's death, his nephew Salva Kosanovich hurried to his uncle's room at the Hotel New Yorker. He was an up-and-coming Yugoslav official with suspected connections to the Communist Party and his country. By the time he arrived, Tesla's body had already been removed, and Kosanovich suspected that someone had already gone through his uncle's effects. Technical papers were missing as well as a black notebook he knew Tesla kept, a notebook with several hundred pages, some of which were marked government. P. Foxworth, assistant director of the New York FBI office, was called in to investigate. According to Foxworth, the government was vitally interested in preserving Tesla's papers. Two days after Tesla's death, representatives of the Office of Alien Property went to his room at the New Yorker Hotel and seized all his possessions. For many years scientists and researchers have sought for Tesla's missing papers with no apparent success. It is conceivable that if Nikola Tesla knew a means for accurately projecting lethal beams of energy through the atmosphere, he may have taken it to the grave with him.